Hey man, you already know we rocking. It's another episode of Bad for the Community. It's Young Rob on the mic. St. E's to the right. Dang. Tomo to the left. I'm here. Nate Nick's in the room. Hello, how you doing? And we got a special guest with us, Lucius Furman. Let's make some noise for this man. Yes, sir. Hit the bonds for him. This might yes, be the sir. drippiest nigga around. <laughs> like, 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 like. Right. I, I might have to give you that, bro. If you got, Appreciate if that, you got NBA players and professional athletes rocking your shit, and they they're millionaires. You feel yeah, me? They yeah. can rock whatever they want, but they yeah. rocking your shit. The money make you drippy. The money make you drippy. It gives you access to drip to that you drip, wouldn't yeah. have access to before. A certain type of pieces of clothing, I feel like you, know, you can still be drippy with no money, nigga. That's fact. That'd be no, some that's, real like you could put, you could put real. a it's fit tough, together yeah. without money. When, when I started out, I was just kind of broke. I ain't gonna lie, I was pretty broke when I started this Instagram shit. So you know I mean? it was really just straight thrifting. Like that's really how it started. Thrifting was me. You spent a lot of thrifty niggas. Where did it all start? No bullshit. Bro, I always say it was, I give credit to my mom. She told me like when I was in like first grade, second grade, like she always want to pick on my clothes going to school, but bro, I would give it like hell. Like in I the remember morning. that. Your mom's picking out your clothes. How, how old <laughs> y'all was y'all when that shit? I feel like my fit was like, fresh when I was younger, bro. My, my fit no, got no, worse. No, no, we seen that one fit. He had a jean jacket. Yeah. yeah. My fit yeah. got yeah. worse. Yeah. Got older, bro. I started picking my own clothes. Bro. So your mom should start picking your fits out again? She be knowing. But nah, we need context too, though. <laughs> I feel like where your family from determines how you dress. Like if you Haitian, you had them slides, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what you're saying? Yeah. Call I'm Haitian. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Try to make it cool. <laughs> Y'all was rocking it with socks? No socks. 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 Yeah. No socks. Yeah. No socks. No socks. Uh, but yeah, I mean, getting dressed by moms. And, and then, then uh, when, when you had to decide, like, yo, no, no, I got it from here. It was really, it was with that first and second grade time. Like, bro, I was like, ma, I can't, I can't do this, ma. I, I, Cause I was, that's when I got into skateboarding too. And oh, skateboarding right. kind of into like that culture definitely intertwines with fashion. So um, I was trying to get, I was rocking like DCs and like, you know, just Tony Hawk shit, like all that, all that. So then um, that's what really got me into it. You know, stu like studying. That's like a different kind of fashion. I was like baggy jeans and mm -hmm. big old shoes. No boy ever, no. Yeah, He's, so I mean, I'm not gonna say the soldier boy ever, but you, you, it, you, you know, yeah, he definitely, you know, what I'm saying he, he yeah. pioneered for that shit. But, but yeah, man. So then after that, uh, uh, I want to say middle school is when I really took it. Start like, nah, like I need this is what I need like. You know, get into fashion and these type of pieces are what I need and stuff like that. So was it out of like genuine love or is like, nah, you see me, I need me some little Johns. <laughs> I gotta get right. They not they not giving me that look that I need. It was a little bit of both, I guess. I mean, mm -hmm. I've always had a love for fashion. I think I think it's just literally been ingrained, bro. Like, cause Jordan changed my life. You feel me? I remember yeah. Shorty like was not look checking for me. <laughs> I got me a pair of what, what's it the Bugs Bunny eights, bro. She started looking my way. I got a line up. It bro, changed yeah. everything. Yeah, bro. Nah, like, I feel bro. that. I, I remember I my first pair, bro. My first pair of ones. <laughs> It was some bullshit ones, bro. They was like like denim, like all denim ones, but yo, they were still hot at the time. So I walked I, I in. Gotta see that. What is that? Like? Them shits was bad. Cause I seen bro. the uh, the Levi fours. Those are hard. Levi nah, fours. those those are those tough. Are but tough. it was it was, it was like a it was on the shelves at Foot Locker type shit. Like it was like oh, mm. no one's really getting those. But mm. it was still ones at the end of the day. So I walked in school, bro. I felt like, some like some high school some musical shit. Huh? Mids or highs? That's, oh. a, that's a good nah, question. They was highs. They was highs. I, highs, I, highs I've never highs, done mids in my life. I, I yeah. can't lie. <laughs> I miss that era where you could really go into the store and like Jordans was available. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, it was, it was on the there. shelf. Now it's like. You can still do that. They made yeah, if they still yeah. on the shelf though. Like you don't That's want what he's though. saying though. Nah, some, sometimes <laughs> yeah. he's like they wasn't, but it was bad. But like you know what I yeah. mean. I was ever rocking the flights though. Oh flights, yeah, nah. I can't lie. I was also, I, I, I before you did like nah. before I took that next step to never. like retros, like yeah, I it was can't lie, bro. I did Never those. Nah, that, that's just a nasty Spizzikes. too, bro. Because nah, <laughs> I was fire. Yo, I got a question though. You got the you got a picture of the boots that made you cry. What? what? Yo, you gotta, you gotta add in all oh, the context. Yeah. Third grade, you got sent to some school with some boots that made you cry, my nigga. Yo. <laughs> oh, you can see he's just it bringing back traumatic, those, was, <laughs> like, <laughs> traumatic yo, memory. Those, bro, those was bad. Yo, I told him that's the, nah, those was like some L.O. Bean winter, like, boots that, like, I just, me personally, bro, those is like the ugliest shits to me. So, like, <laughs> those didn't come back into style, like, eventually. L.O. Bean? Those hard, bro. They can't, some of them, like, White came, some of them rocking boots, that. Yeah, I had. the duck boots, that's what I'm talking about. This is kind of comfortable, bro. Yeah. I ain't never seen bro, nobody I, slipping them shits. But these ones, these ones, just wasn't it was bad. like, it was like, we need a picture. Facts. Shit, if I could find that shit, bro, it was bad, that. bro. That's I, crazy. I can't lie. Did like, someone clown you? Oh, I gotta get out of this. I mean, bro, because the thing is, I would come in, right, those same pair of ones, and then yeah. the next day, my mom's like, oh, it's snowing, you gotta put these on. Yeah. I can't, you know, you kind of like, you just like, impress everybody, like, and then you come in with those, it's like, damn, like, 
And plus, yeah, nah, no bullshit. Because you're also not trying to fuck up your shoes, the ones that you do fuck with. So it's kind of like a choice. It's choice. It's like, damn. I got to talk to my little cousins because I feel like middle school culture ain't the same. But I don't think niggas get bullied no more. For what they're wearing, Yo, like, shit so. like that. It's because they got the, so. like the they got the no tolerance, like that's you like know, so free, like you can get canceled. Too. I, I think niggas yeah. are still getting clowned. I like. was on the train the other day and kids was forcing it. Really? No yeah. bullshit for shit. no reason too. Bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like more yeah. and more I'm seeing it, like especially as like the youth that I'm working with, they mm. be like younger. They just left middle school and shit. Mm. Yeah, nah, them niggas still oh. be getting bullied. Bro. <laughs> niggas niggas still be getting yeah. All them niggas, yeah, it's bad, bro. It's tough. That shit brought me back to like a tough time. Like, <laughs> like, I think when I like when I made the drastic switch in my fashion, like really started caring. Like wearing polo and all that shit. Wearing polo and yeah. like making sure yeah. I had the craziest polo was when I got caught with USPA, bro. Bro, my man. Yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, like you niggas was clowning me. Yeah. They was on some. Like, why you got two niggas on one horse? <laughs> like, yo, yo, yeah, your horse carpooling, my nigga. <laughs> like, why you got two niggas on there? That's crazy. US man. Parachute this Association. Like, like, what is that, that I'm not going to say his name. They, they were clowning that nigga. Neck. I went home. I went in my closet. I, I said, I can't wear any of that shit. You're lucky that you got to, got to <laughs> learn from like someone else's experience. Well, you got to remember, too, I went to private it. school, so Two we're not wearing clothes horse. every day. Mm, it's only it's on like dress down days. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just one dress down day. I peeped this nigga, wear that shit, niggas on his ass. I was like, yeah, that can't be me. I just took that shit away. Put that shit in the closet. Put that shit to a different part of the closet. Put that shit in the drawers. Yo, because of that, like you got to wait for the summer to like really pull out your like your fits. Or is those dress days the ones like, yo, I got Dress down days are the days where it's like, you got to wear some shit, nigga. You know what I mean? Yeah. He Back wore then, that. I was just wearing all the different poles that's that I tough, had. Man. Probably felt good about Tom, it. Man. That's what I'm saying. Like, he was like, this, this the day yeah, I get to bro, you look forward to them days, nigga. Like, oh, Friday's a dress down? Oh, bet you playing that shit on like, Tuesday them. night. Yeah. You feel me? Were y'all yeah. able to wear whatever kicks y'all wanted, though? Yeah. Even though, like, you guys had, like, uniform and everything? Oh, you talking about in uniform? And, like, in general. Like, yeah, like, on a regular day. They didn't change that shit until I was probably in, like, sixth, seventh grade. That's when they like, you can wear whatever sneakers you want. I don't want to know about so what you wearing before, like loafers. Yeah, facts. Tight shit. Yeah. That was the only yeah. way that niggas could show that they had drip, nigga. High school <laughs> yeah. niggas. Just shoot kicks, bro. nigga. No bullshit. Bro, I kind of fuck with that. Like, that that would have been nice for, like, my mom's pockets and everything. Oh, like, yeah. I just wear the same shit and I don't get judged. My purse, I just got to be, like, class clown. Like, I could do that. What the fuck? No, bro. But, like, now I got to put extra effort and I got to look good. Be cool too, like I don't know. Man. With the Brockton High, I don't know. I'm saying, nah, but I'm saying before, <laughs> like I'm saying, yeah, like middle school, work. elementary, <laughs> like once you in high school, I definitely feel like you should have the freedom, like wear whatever you want. But like yeah. it really would make it easier in elementary, middle school. It's like, yo, wear that shit. Mm. You feel me? Kind mm-hmm. of. That should be expensive I, though. I mean, how many, how many of them are you getting? I mean, a lot of them. Nigga, you need, you need a, a bunch of them shits, bro. Yeah, a lot I of kids. Like you just need a rotation. No, I'm, like, not, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your uniform clothes too, nigga. I mean, yeah, like, you get a, like a rotation of like you what? Five, nigga, his, his khakis like five, come back four. brown at the end yeah, of the week. Yeah, bro, no, no bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> Wearing the same khakis, nigga. I don't yeah, know. Nah. Cause you know it's middle school too. Niggas gonna spill this shit on Hold themselves. Up. So you, what you about to say? I was about to ask him how you went about getting like acquiring sneakers and shit at a young age and shit like that. You feel me? Acquiring sneakers, new drip and shit like that. So when I was like like first grade, yeah, when you started like figuring out your own swag and shit. Um. No cow, I was pretty well off in Florida. Uh, my my parents they started their own business and uh, right I think that freshman year dropped out because they was making a lot of money. So we was blessed to like we was living like niggas was like neighbors with The Rock, like oh, Fred Ross, Look. like yeah it was that type of shit. So. Oh, yeah. So I, I was able to. This nigga yeah, jealous as fuck. This nigga mad jealous. I seen, I jealous. seen the work rock. No, it's not jealous. No, no, no. I, I love that I shit. Like, I, 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 I seen the Rick Ross. That's not where I'm going. I was, the Rick Ross like videos of like his cribs and shit. No, like yeah, how many yeah, acres of land? It's like, like, the face that he made. He was like, oh. It's like because <laughs> if they're your neighbor, bro, that don't mean they're anywhere close to you. you feel, yeah. Like my neighbor is. 20 yards away, my nigga, like, you feel me? Like, his neighbors was probably, like, you had to, like, get some binoculars. Like, like, oh, Rick Ross over there? Oh, shit. Yeah, I think, the Rock actually, Johnson? I think we, like, went in a couple, because I know he had, like, a little booth in there. Like, he had a, his crib was crazy. I think we went, like, one time to see it, but I didn't meet him or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, man, we was living, so uh, I was definitely blessed at a young age to be able to be like, yo, can I get this? Can I get this? They were still, like, I think that's why I am the way I am now. Like, it was very disciplined. I wasn't that spoiled kid that got whatever they wanted. Mm-hmm. But it was definitely like, you know, you work for what you got type thing. And, you know, I was always good at school. So, you know, they would hook me up sometimes. So, luckily, I was blessed enough to have that accessibility to get some certain things. Yeah, that's like how that. I should be. Yeah, and that's important that they instill that everything. still in you, you feel me? Like, even if you got it, you still got to have that mentality. Yeah. Like, I still want my kid to be a grinder. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know? like, if you just give them everything, then that's how they're going to grow up that's, expecting yeah. that shit. And then that's also sets them up for failure in the future. Because I know, I know certain kids that I grew up with are definitely the type like
been fed everything. So, like, they don't really know how to go out there and get it, you know, when they're hungry. So it's like, damn. Yo. Uh, I'm glad I didn't, I didn't, glad I didn't end up like that. Girl was telling me that this morning. Mm-hmm. She's saying, like, at her school, they used to offer, like, laundry services. Like, you could pay, like, or like, get it in your, like, like, school? college? In college, in oh, college. college. Like, 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 high school. Like, instead of doing, like, you could, uh-huh. you could pay someone to do your laundry. Oh, like, the school so provided it. And because there were so many, like, international students who would just were accustomed to that. They don't yeah, clean yeah. shit. You feel me? They got maids or servants yeah. or whatever the case is. And That's then wild. they get to school. And mm-hmm. it's like, unless you have that, some kids just... She said she knew a nigga like, yo, he was rich back in his home country. He never cleaned his room, bro. Like, he didn't know how, bro. And I'm yeah. just like. Nah, that's real, though. That's that's, real, yeah, that's crazy. It's kind of sad. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know how to do laundry. No bullshit. Nah, no, I didn't know how to do laundry. These yeah. niggas capping on my name, bro. This bro, shit's crazy, nigga. bro. Alright, bro. Did we not say that last time? <laughs> yeah, you right, confirmed that crazy, shit. Alright, bro. I feel like you admitted it last time. You was like, I'm saying. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. Bro, know. I knew you. Know, <laughs> like the first two weeks, he didn't know, nigga. He was what did like, I know? How you? What did I know, bro? Bro, you was like, you bro, you was like, how you do this, bro? I just nah, show you how to do it, nigga. I just show you how to wash clothes, bro. I'm not stepping, nigga, bro. I ought to look that shit up before I ask another nigga. I did, bro. That's why. That's why. I'm not taking nigga, bro. I know he was like, I don't know, nigga. Alright, so yeah, so your your parents are already business minded people, so you you know. And now you've gone to the point where you now have your own fashion business. Yeah. I feel like I'm probably skipping a couple years from there. I was about to say, you was living down south for some years, bro. How did that like affect your view on life and like just your yeah. the overall sense of Florida you know, yeah. type shit? Uh, yeah, I mean, Florida, I'm I'm very glad I'm up here now. Uh, but mm. I'm not that Florida was bad, but even we went to yeah, we went to Miami <laughs> like like Damn. two weeks ago, and it's just a different, bro. It's just different in Miami. Like every, it's the same the same way I look at like L. A. It's just like, bro, people, if you don't look like you're rich, nobody's fucking with you, bro. If you don't look like you got something going on in your life, like, nobody's fucking with you, for real. Like, that's really how it is. Like It's like a front. Yeah. Because, like, for the most the part, front, mm, for everybody's real. a tourist. Or, like, or everybody's mm. from somewhere else. Yeah. Especially L.A. Or, you know, yeah, yeah. like, it's a, it's a melting pot. It's just people all coming from their home states and... They just pick their personality mm-hmm. at that point. That's really, at that, that's really how it is. Like, you know, yo. like, oh, they don't know me. They don't know me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was that lame yeah. ass nigga in yeah. college, like, in whatever, my home to high school, or whatever. Man, I come back to LA, Miami. If I got some bread, I'm that nigga now. Yeah, exactly. It's and, a like, fantasy, bro. It's a now. fantasy. So I'm, I'm glad that, and, you know, my parents, they were very business oriented, but, you know, things went left. That's why we moved back up. So, you know, when we came back, we was not as half as fortunate as we was down there type shit. So, um, you know, from going from having it all, to having nothing, that also like gave me the mindset I have now, you know what I'm saying? So it was just like, it was definitely like a, it was cool to live and it was cool to see what life could be like if you, mm-hmm. you know, really do get it. But I'm glad mm-hmm. that, you know, things did go left. And I actually thank my parents for making those mistakes because now, you know, they could teach me not to make the same ones and stuff like that. So it was definitely like a, I just look at it as a lesson, really. I look at that period of time yeah. as a lesson. Like a humbling experience. Yeah. You feel me? I feel like we, you know, I think, we talk about that a lot on this podcast about taking a risk and like following mm-hmm. your passions and everything. But there's also like the other side of it where it's like it's high risk, high reward. Exactly. And that and that's yeah. what comes mm-hmm. with it. But I still I still think it's dope regardless. Like you still gotta take those risks. You feel me? And I think like you just said, it's necessary. Even if you you know, like you fell back a little, mm-hmm. it's like it's time to regroup at that mm-hmm. point and just re Facts. I don't know, just finding find a new way to get back up. That's, that's really what it. Say all the time. That's really what it is, yeah. Feel me? So how was that experience coming back here now? It's like a different experience. You know? Well, yeah, what was... Snow. I mean, what I was going to ask was... <laughs> no, was like, do you remember the first day I saw snow, bro? Bro, I was lit. Oh, bro. that's crazy. Yo, I was lit, bro. I was like, yo, this is really coming down. Like, it was... I bet that bro. faded so quick, oh, man, bro. It was so quick, like, bro. So like, that, that first week might have been like, fuck, yeah, man. This shit is yellow. Yeah, that's really good. Like, 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 no, it's falling. It just stays. Yeah, no, but keep you in the crib and all that. But now I was going to ask, right? So, growing up, when did... Now, I want to make sure I pronounce it correct. It's Crave, right? Yeah, Crave. Crave, yeah. Just want to make sure. What does that stand for? When we was at the fashion show, yeah, I, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But um, um, change requires accepting views. Change requires accepting views. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's when interesting you itself. were, I love to hear you explain you. that. But thank you. Coming up with all that, you know, and like starting to really come up with ideas to make your own brand. Was it something that you sat down with your parents and were like, "Yo, like this is where I'm at right now. What advice do you guys got for me?" It was more so they just seen it grow up for what it was, and it's like, "Oh yeah, this is what I've been doing this whole time." I think um I think it's a little bit of both because mm. I so sixth grade, bro, I don't know why, but Jaden Smith was like my idol, bro. I don't know why. <laughs> that mean, I was like, shit. yo, I how was like, Jayden? damn, because he had how old are you? 
That's really yeah, that's good. He's one. not that much older than me. He was like twenty, but like at that time, sixth grade, I'm like, this is who right, I think I am. He's on that like, Justin Bieber song. Yeah, like oh, yeah, all yeah, that. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying yeah, to think. Which like, Jaden Smith is this? Yeah, <laughs> you know, Misfits. He had that. Okay, he had that so little this fish. is like yeah. this is like 2013. Yeah, like 2012, like 2013, yeah. 2014 area. But like that's when he he had that little click, that little Misfits group, mm-hmm. and I was like, damn, like I really do want to start my own brand. Like that that would be super dope. But then I'm like, his dad's also Will Smith. So, like, he, he has <laughs> a lot of access. Like, that, you know, maybe I, I was like, that's not really realistic for, you know, someone like me. So high school, my freshman year, we actually did a project in my, um, it was like Tech Essentials class or something like that. And uh, mm-hmm. one of the projects was to start your own company, build a website for it and all that stuff. Mm. And I was like, yo, I want to do this clothing brand. So, that's so dope. Um, yeah, I wrote like, I think I think it was called Volume Clothing. And the idea was to, to combine street... No cap, but something similar to to Tomo clothes for real. Word. It was it was like combining street art, like graffiti things like that, and just slapping it on clothes, and you know, like kind of doing like an artist trust fund to where you could make like artists more money, things like that. You know what I'm saying? But because I never really saw something like what Virgil's doing, you know, I never really saw that like mm-hmm. you know interfering like like streetwear culture for real. Like st- I'm talking street, like straight. You go outside and you see what's on the walls and all that graffiti on clothes like you never really saw that for real so then uh that was kind of the first idea behind the clothing brand that was volume yeah and then uh i never i just never really went through with it it was just a project so after that it was kind of clipped but um yeah yeah, but then in high school i actually i really felt like i didn't i obviously i dressed like good like i looked well put together but none of the pieces was really crazy like it was just like milton high like people didn't care too much about fat like i'm sure if i was at another high school that I probably wouldn't win best dress. I feel like maybe I would, but I don't know. I just didn't feel like I was the best dress. What was person the gear? For what was the gear? Cause man, I know what I was going like. Man, it was a lot of it was a lot of Vic, high like, school. Man, it's straight true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, I was wearing that too. I think that's why people fucked with it because it was like it was kind of like I've always been combining like like preppy look with like streetwear. Like that's kind of like, like how I describe it. Mm. And I think that actually stems from Florida. I was in uniform and stuff like that, but I was trying to make the uniform look as fly as possible. Yeah, like throw a little like shit that. to it that I, I could shit. without getting in trouble. So I think that preppy look, that streetwear look com- combination is what really drew the people in. And and that's I think that's why I won best dress in high school. But yeah. You it got was, best dress over, fig- over Fuego. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh shit. We got, we got, I'm gonna find him. So when did it all click where you was like, all right, this is something I'm interested in and something, you know, I I put effort into every Mm -hmm. time I'm hopping in school, but to actually turn it into a business, something that you want to actually put your whole entire effort into. When did Mm -hmm. that all come together? It was literally like, I think right after high school, bro, like that Mm -hmm. summer going into into college. um, Where'd you go to school? I went to Bentley, but I also dropped out. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm, I mean, technically, I'm still a role, but I took a gap year, taking another one. I'm, I'm probably not going back the way things are going. You know, what I'm saying? you know, Chris, 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 Chris Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We had him on the pod. He, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, he has yeah, a similar story. He, you know, he went to Bentley too, and mm-hmm. then you know he followed yep, his yep. passion. And, and his is crazy. His is working out. Yeah, I was a sophomore when I decided to stick to it. Like right after my sophomore years, when I decided, he was a right after junior year, so he had one year left, and mm-hmm. like so that's like I applaud him for you know. It's so easy to be like, you know what, let me just bang out the shit and, right. you know, do what everybody else wants me to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how right. I felt, you know, and especially with my parents, it was that, that conversation was crazy. You know, mm, I, had to, that bro, I built it. I mean, my mom's is my mom's is a very free spirit. So she was like, you know, what, do what you want to do. Chase your dreams. Mm-hmm. My dad was is similar. But, you know, since he made those mistakes, like he did the same thing, went yeah. to school, made a lot of money with the business left. He feels like maybe if I went to school. You know, my decision making would have been a lot better mm. to where I wouldn't have made those mistakes and, you know, where we at today. So him, it was like, don't have the same legacy as me type thing, you know what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. something like that. So, but I look at it as like, you made those mistakes, you could teach me not to make those same mistakes. Exactly. Now, you know what I'm saying? So, because I, I just, you know, I was at Bentley, man. I'm like, damn, like, I'm not doing anything I love for real. Like, I had it all, you know, I was a, I had like a 3.9 GPA in high school, bro. SAT score is good, everything good. I had PWC internship laid out for me and all that, but I told him, I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm good. Like, I could keep the internship. You know, I got this dream I'm really trying to chase. I, I did the same thing. Uh, I got the saying. internship. They gave me the full-time uh, offer. I'm not trying to yeah, do what you want me to do. Like, I can't sit in that box all day. I really that's can't. Why you, you, see, you know the hours yeah. they be going through. It's just like, salute to everybody you do it, but when you feel like you got a greater purpose, you got to follow yeah, that you shit. you really do. So, yeah, yeah. so um, right after high school, 
Um, it was a, me and my family like to have like discussions, like conversations and shit. You know what I'm saying? So we was just talking. This is around oh, the time. Healthy. I was about to say, that's healthy. Healthy. Yeah, I've never had a moment. Like <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we that was looks- just we was having a conversation about uh. This I was around it. the time Kanye was uh pushing Trump agenda heavy. Like he was on that wave. <laughs> but you know, you know that was the you know. I'm still a Kanye fan at the time, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm still like, yo. I think we all are. Yeah, we're just yeah, a little just, disappointed. It's just like, damn, like, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, um, sure. what year was that? Like, 2018? I looked up at Nick's. <laughs> yeah, that was like 2018, 2019. Yeah, you know, like, sure. So then my, my dad said something at, he, while he was talking, he was like, I just don't like Kanye personally. And I was like, but you never met Kanye. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel like, and I feel like people do that a lot. It's like, yo, if I, if you don't agree with me, I don't fuck with you. And it's like, why? Like, it's, you know, we could just, you know, agree to disagree on certain topics mm-hmm. and still, I'm sure this, I'm sure I fuck with everybody in this room, but I'm sure we have different opinions on a whole lot of shit. You know sure. what I'm saying? Even the bread shit. I see what it's going. Like, like, you know what I'm going. saying? So then I'm like, I was in the shower that same night. I'm in the shower. I'm like, bro, in order to achieve change. Shower like, thoughts, nigga. Just, Shower thoughts is crazy. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I was, I was like, in order to achieve change, we got to start accepting each other's views and respecting it. And that's mm. when I was like, wait a minute, that kind of sounds smooth. And then I was like, what would that be as an acronym? I was like, oh shit, crave. Like that's that's rolls off the tongue nice. That's really smooth, clump, you know, clean. And after that, bro, that's when I knew I was like, nah, this is it. This is it right here. So, that's yeah, that's so was that conversation so, with your pops that made you realize that? Yeah. Yeah. So I was looking into it. I remember you posted a video kind of like opening the door to Crave and showing people like, you know, where it's coming from and where the idea came from. I mean, yeah. You mentioned people like Dodson, you know, yeah, obviously you mentioned, yeah. you know, other people. Yeah. Who is Uncle Herbie to you? Uncle Herbie, that's like, a, I mean, he's family. That's my that's my cousin, really. Uh-huh. But we call him Uncle Herbie because he's that's kind of the figure he's always been. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, he was like, you know, he's he worked with Gucci, right? He was like one of Gucci's like, you know, top sellers when he was with them type thing. You know, he's a great salesman, so... Um, he has that, exp- you know, to have that experience, like when you back there and cause you know, retail at like Vans is a lot different than retail at Gucci. You know what I'm saying? No, that's mm-hmm. a whole, s- <laughs> like you gotta you create got an clients. experience. Yeah, like, like, yeah, it really is an experience like, for everybody. You have to know exactly what you're talking about. There's a story behind every piece and it's not like, it's not right up. Like you can't go to a piece and know the story. Like they have to be able to communicate. You know, it's really sell it. So they're not bullshitting. Yeah. Like, like it's real, yeah, it's real yeah, history yeah, behind yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So. So um, just having Every time that, I walked into a Gucci store, they never paid attention to me. They probably out there. <laughs> yeah, they, they, know, they, knew, yeah, they knew it was looking type of shit. But yeah, yeah um, man, he was just, he just taught me a lot about like little stuff like shipping and, you know, th- different things like that, like that I could really, like that experience from there is what really, and he's had, he's gone through his, you know, fair share of this is my brand, this is my, you know, he has, he's a very creative person. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a stuck to a lot of the brands, but it's still good to like, you know, get that knowledge of yeah, like have an OG to talk yeah, exactly. to. Yeah, exactly. So that's get yeah, that's, from, that's who he was, the OG for real to, okay. to speak to about fashion. You know, wow. yeah. Shout out her. And I think what's <laughs> dope with with Crave, like for anybody you don't like doesn't know, like like we said, the acronym stands for you know change requires accepting views. So it's bigger than just looking good. Like I see <laughs> mm-hmm. a lot of the pieces they have, you know, even political statements yeah, and, sure. and like you know social agendas behind it. How how much does that mean to you that your clothes don't just look good, but actually like mean something to you? And they like it's a form of expression that people can clearly tell, like you know where you stand. Yeah. Um. To me, that was the most imp- that was the most important part. That's what took so long. I I crave when I had that conversation with my dad. That was in August. So crave. I always say August 2019 is when the idea was made. I didn't put anything out till July of the next year, and all the designs were done by March. So really, it was just like, I'm very, very specific on how I want a message to be <clears throat> portrayed because I know I'm big on statement pieces. Like I feel like if I walk out, I want, like the other day, I was wearing this, this shirt from Change, um, dope brand. Uh, it said, protect kids, not guns. That's clear as, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah. you know, you walk in and I got, yo, I love your shirt. I love your, you know, people just. Man, almost caught me a baddie off the shirt for real. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, I love your shirt. Like, you know what I'm saying? So then you could build a conversation off that. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so I really wanted a piece. I really wanted to make pieces that when people wore, the way I look at it, it was like if I go to like the, you know, a Black Lives Matter protest or you know, any type of protest, they they like I don't need a sign, you know, you see what I'm rocking type of thing. So that was kind of the idea behind it. And then um, like just getting those messages, like, bro, I knew. I knew I was doing something special when bro, I posted like just the mock-up of the t-shirt. It wasn't even 
like designed it for real. Mm-hmm. And this dude hit me up. He was like 14. He was like, yo, I think, you know, Crave has like changed the way I look at, bro. He sent me like this long oh, paragraph. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I really love what you're doing. Like change really does require accepting views. And, you know, I could, you know, now he's using this as like talking points is when he goes back to school, you know, talking about certain th- different things. He's like, yo, I think you're really like changing my life. And I was just mm-hmm. off the mock-up with a T. So I'm like, you know, now I'm doing something special for real. Shout out to him. I forget his name, but shout out to him, bro. Um, that that you really pushed me to like keep going for real. That's when I knew like I could really do something special. So yeah. Yeah, I think one of the dopest pieces I've seen like is the uh, the black woman um, mm-hmm. like shirt where mm-hmm. you know on the back like it says black woman how to pronounce it yeah, everything yeah. just like the definition and then on the back there's like ten different mm-hmm. definitions yeah. of like what a black woman is yeah. and there's so many other pieces like that like you know is the popular like call it what it is Mm -hmm. what is that what does that mean like that statement right there that that right there was a direct uh sub to trump um that was right after the the dayton um shooting Mm. where i think it it was a white man i think he killed about seven maybe seven nine people just randomly Mm -hmm. you know just out there and i was like you know you look at like certain things that trump the way and this isn't even trump honestly this is a lot of you know people that aren't black um, and they'll be like, you know, when it's a dude, someone that looks like us and they go out and, you know, they do something wrong, you know, they, they thug, yeah, you know what I'm facts. saying? They, they, they just a bad human, you know what I'm saying? Like they were not victims at all. But then you look at, you know, these school shooters, um, mass shooters, and it's like, yo, or even mental like illness. people did the insurrection, like insurrection yeah. and like they get humanized. It's immediately labeled mental illness. And it's like, yo. And this is all, all you know, white people or anything like that. But a lot of white people are a lot off, off rip. You have more privilege, and off most of the time, y'all way more fortunate than low income communities. You know I don't what I'm saying? You can argue that one. So, yeah. so then I'm like, you saying, you saying that's a mental illness? Where they get that mental illness from? Like, black people have mental illness built inside of them from, from traumas that we yo from yeah. trauma, generational. Like, generational trauma for real. So then I'm like, Thanks. why is it that we always the Thanks. bad guy? And then as soon as this mass shooter comes around, yo, he's he got a mental illness, he's a problem. You know, he was bullied as a kid. Yo, everybody had their fair share of bullying. You know, I they don't mean I'm finna go shoot up a school. Type yeah. shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's a disconnect, yeah. clearly. So then under that, under the mental illness part, it says, you know, racism, hate, terrorism, because that's really what it is. You know, just call the shit what it is. Like, it's not, you know, let's stop walking around the subject when it's a certain group of people. But when it's another group of people, we saying you know directly what it is. So mm. that's kind of the idea behind, behind that piece. I respect that. Word. Yeah. So like seeing that your brand is based around social justice, like how are you using your art and your platform to um like address these issues? I mean, I've been blessed now with an even bigger platform because when I start when I started with Crave, I only had like probably like two thousand followers on Instagram, maybe, uh, maybe not even. So so now that I have a such a, a bigger platform, I could reach a lot more people, you know what I'm saying? And I think it's dope. That's why I feel like I've, I've been trying to do a lot of work, especially with people from Boston and people from Mass in general, to to push a narrative that, you know, we want to see, you know what I'm saying? And um, I think I never, I would never call myself like a, like a, you know, activist or anything like that. Like, like the true activists are like the Malcolm X's, you know what I'm saying? The James Baldwin's like, you know what I'm saying? So, but to to I try to pay as much owe to them as I can, and I think just by mm-hmm. doing that off rip, you already you know what I'm saying using your platform in a, in a better way. So so what are you doing exactly? Because like I felt like you had said that you wanted to like push like a specific like agenda, mm-hmm. right? So like what is that agenda? So for me, it's it's just like it goes back to the the really the first idea of Crave as far as like change requires accepting views. Mm-hmm. It's like the whole idea is to get people to challenge how entitled they are to their opinions. You know what I'm saying? And like, I want to be able to go up, there's this, I learned while I was in school, this is like the, probably my biggest takeaway. I learned that there's a difference between racism and racializing. So racism is obviously like the prejudice and hate for racism, mm-hmm. but racializing is something that we all do. And it's like, when you go, you know, if I was to see an Asian person, I automatically assume that they do really well in school. You know what I'm saying? So like implicit bias. Yeah, implicit yeah, it's like, it's like a, a bunch of biases, bias. a bunch of stereotypes. So I think everybody does that. Because I already, you know, unfortunately, when I meet people, when I see them, you kind of already have like a, yeah, sure. a preconceived yeah, and, and like, idea you know. of them. You know what I'm saying? So the narrative I'm trying to push is to try to be able to challenge that, you know, that idea of when you first meet someone like, yo, like, 
this this isn't like who I, you know, like come to me with a clear mind, you know, mm. and learn who I really am once we have this conversation, once we get to know each other. So I think, I think pushing, you know, the clothes, but I, I really, I feel like I haven't done this enough, but I want to start creative directing like the videos, the video pieces that I have coming. Those are really, I think those are going to really wake people up. Um, it's, it's, I, I don't want to say them just yet. I, I will, I'll wait for y'all to see them, and, sure. you know, yeah, really get sure. y'all ideas. Speak on ideas. But um, I think like video, me and Chris, we actually working on oh, some. Right? Yeah, oh, we, yeah, we got some coming um, soon. Not, not really soon, but we got some coming. And um, I think the video pieces really show what I'm trying to push, like 100%. I think, it, I think it's a clear message. Because I think like even them asking those questions, it's important because it's like, not to say it's you, like you're mm -hmm. doing that, but you know, there are people who can, you know, it's like performative, like people can be performative activists and like use that to, you know, try to profit for themselves. No, absolutely. And, and, and that you like, like we've seen that yeah. happen, you know, and there's even allegations of yeah. certain organizations, you know, enriching themselves through, you know, all these like absolutely. social injustices yeah. that are happening. Yeah. So how do you make sure that it's like, it's not just, you know, self enriching or just like, building up the brand, mm -hmm. but actually, you know, going beyond that to, you know, create real change. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I want to give a, you the run of that, you know, no, answer no, no, that. That was, that was a big fear for me, actually, in the beginning, that people would think like that of me, you know what I'm saying? Because it's very, you know, people do that shit all the time, bro. There was so many brands coming out and, you know, just slapping a victim's face or a victim's name on there without, you know what I'm saying, like having any type of sympathy for them just to, you know, make some money. Um, but I, I've always say a big goal of mine is to start creating foundation because um, I've always been very like weary of who I send my money to, like as far as like foundation wise and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> I want to I want to be able to one day really create like a a, a very transparent um, foundation to where like people know exactly where their money is going. You know what I'm saying? So that could because that could really I feel like that could really help. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, money is what makes you know a lot of shit go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, I have a couple connects to where I think I could be able to make that happen very, you know, very soon. And it would be very dope to, to create a, a, a actual change. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like telling people like what I want to do. You know so what I'm saying? Is, and I remember seeing it like a while back. So correct me where like the holes in the story is, but do you not have like a fundraiser tied to one of your schools or those high school or middle school where like you have set up like a, a scholarship? Oh yeah. Um, I did. I went back to my high school. Mm. Um, what was that like last month? Yeah, so I actually won it when I was in uh when I was in high school. We do we have the scholarship night, and so it's like you know you give a certain kid amount of money to to when they go to school and stuff like that. It's it's basically just a scholarship from anybody who wants to give it. Mm -hmm. So I won one when I was in my senior year. Um, sucks for that guy because I didn't <laughs> I left school, but oh, <laughs> I mean I'm sure he'll still yeah. respect he'll, he'll still yeah, respect yeah. you know you following your dreams. But yeah, so I went back and um I gave I gave a thousand dollar scholarship to this girl and I said you know I wanted it's the Crave Entrepreneurship Scholarship, mm -hmm. so really it's to someone who has like an artistic expression that really wants to you know start their own business and because for me it wasn't on school you could have not gone to school and still got the scholarship. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was like yo like you know if you have entrepreneurship you know, aspirations, then, um, you know, I think this, the scholarship is right for you. So I worked with the guidance, my old guidance counselors there to figure out which student really, you know, deserved that the most and the girl that won it. She, um, she started her own, I think, co cos cosmetology business and clothing business. Fire. And, um, yeah. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I think, you know, it'd be dope for, for her to re receive mm -hmm. it. So I want to do that yearly. Um, you know the name of the brand that she started? So I don't know. I, I wish I, yeah, I, I, I didn't even get to meet her. Unfortunately, oh, uh, her brother was killed. Oh, and so wow. she was at a, another scholarship event that actually honored him. So I didn't mm -hmm. get to meet her. Or, you know, I have a, she hasn't emailed me yet, but I think I, I should expect the emails. That way we could, you know, really get to conversation yeah, and stuff. Sure. But, mm -hmm. and that's big. Like, you know, even you said, like, as access to money, you know, increases, mm -hmm. then there's more that can be done. But even with the means that you have, doing something. You yeah, know, exactly. Like, I'm doing like what I can corny. right now. People yeah. be like, thousand dollars. <laughs> like, like, nigga, what did you yeah, do? Yeah, you feel yeah. me? Type shit. So it's, it's at least like, you know, doing something. And you know, I don't think that's corny, bro. What's not corny about that? I think bro? the reason why they that's do not that corny shit to celebrities is the, is all the, thing. the time, bro. Thing. I don't think that's corny because you have to look at like the way that things operate in like in life. You feel me? 
it's like on the one end, it's like you're doing something that's like benefiting like an individual person when you're like having like a message that like you're hoping to like impact as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's corny. I think it's just a criticism. You feel me? What's corny is saying that because also like your reasoning for why it's corny as well is like with that comparison is like, what are you doing? It's like, you don't know what they're doing either. So it's like, if anything, that's corny. But I will say. <laughs> but they're the ones who are going out of their way. That's what I'm saying. Like, but how do you know that they're not doing something the on criticism? Their how do you know that they're not doing anything on their end? But I'm not criticizing them for like. You're not, yeah, you for, you're not criticized for the comments and you're criticized for the pocket watching, essentially. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't know. I feel like that's different than my like biggest criticizing thing is like, the person for doing something. If no, if you decided to do nothing, then I just feel neutral about you. You feel me? I, I've, I've always stood on that. bro. If nigga gave neutral. me a man out of high school, bro, I was like, oh shit, bro. It's a real nigga right here. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> so I'm not saying that, but I think like I think like in general though is what I'm saying. Because it's like they, like they kill Virgil for that too. You remember that? Like the Yeah, yeah. but the niggas that, that, that was 50 though. bells. That was corny as fuck. Niggas gave me 50 bells as a reference for that. Bro, but nigga gave me 50 bells out of high school. I'd be like, nigga, I could have made shit my fucking That was corny as hell, bro. That's the same shit before I knew the full story though. He only shared that part of it because he's like, that's an amount that I thought other people would see and be like, oh, that's receptive enough for you to go do it. He actually donated like, I think like somewhere between like 50000 to like $100,000. So the way that he went about relaying that was the corny. Real, that's that's what I'm saying. The way he went about communicating <laughs> it was, like, was, yeah, it was, like, it was wrong. What is it? Jake posted his shit and he uh, posted oh, his shit. Yeah, Jake yeah, said yeah. like 50. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> why did he do that? <laughs> when he, and again, Virgil's a very interesting yeah. person, but when he went on to explain it, he said, I just thought of a number that in my head when someone sees that, they could be like, oh, I could do that too. Like the I'm common person can see that and be like, $50 is nothing. I could donate that too. If he was supposed, he said, if I was supposed to like a hundred thousand dollars, people are looking at me like, oh, okay, that's yeah. cool that he did that. I can't. My fifty dollars won't matter. I can't match. I can't reciprocate. You feel me? I didn't know that until he the went on to explain this. Right. 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 He could have said that. He could have said that. <laughs> <laughs> <could've> said that. <laughs> but, yeah. And I mean, but sure, though, nigga, I don't know. But I yeah. think that's even going back to what you're saying though. It's like, why are we even trying to criticize people for making the action regardless, or even just compare like the positive efforts? Like at the end of the day, you're doing something within your means. Like, well, you know what you can, as long as you don't. You know what you can. Yeah, that's and, I don't, real. and I don't think like there's anything wrong with that. I think that it's not. I'm I'm just saying that I don't think it's corny to like cri- like criticism like lend criticism to people in general. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I think like what's corny is not lending criticism, but also lending criticism that's like based in nothing. You feel me? It's like if you're just saying like oh like only a thousand and then like that's it. Be like I. Right. Yes, only a thousand. Moving on, you feel me? But if it's like only a thousand, it's like all right. But now, what are you doing on the ground? You feel me to like impact this, or what's like the follow up and shit like that? That to me is more important than like giving thing in, in general. And like you're saying, like no one's gonna lend that critique to you because that's something that you're working on right now. Mm-hmm. Where it's like you want to follow up and you want to like continue to engage with her and see how she develops her brand. You feel me? So it's like it's not that's not corny. But lending the critique, I think it's like that's valid. Yeah. I will ask though, I think like one of the questions that I have as far as like kind of like relating to what Rob was saying, just general, just in general mm-hmm. on this idea of like performative like actions. I won't say like activism only because I feel like activism is a very particular sector of like organizing work. That's like, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm not really like super in favor of myself. You feel me? But I think as you continue to grow and develop as like a person and also as like an artist and as a creative director, I think like your brand is going to continue to have impact. Yeah. I think the question for me is like, what tangible like changes would you want to see? You know what I mean? Mm. That your brand or like your creative direction has on people. You feel mm. me? Like systems, policies, the way that people move, the way that people operate. Yeah. Because I think like it's dope. Like I feel like the vision, you know what I mean? Where it's like you want to like make sure that people are like realizing that in order to progress forward, like they have to be more accepting of other people's views for sure. Right. And if like you want to see change, you have to do that. And that's the first step. Uh. I think like now it's like tangibly, yeah, yeah. like what do you want to see? Whether mm. that's like a policy change, whether that's like specific, like, you know what I mean? Groups of people operating differently. Like mm. what is it? It's tough. It's tough to answer because, like, I feel like with with direct tangibles, a lot of times, like, politics kind of has to be in it. You know what I'm saying? To really, to really make a, to really make a difference. That's just kind of how the world works. And it's funny because, like, this is a very political brand. I actually hate politics. So it's like trying to trying to find the way that I could still impact that. You know what I'm saying? I luckily I actually interned at the state house. I was a junior in in, in high school. Where so having different ties in there, you know, it'd be, it'd be cool to like have these discussions, you know what I'm saying? These same talk that we have now mm-hmm. with, you know, with bigger, with more, not, I don't want to say impactful, but people with more power than us, you know, that I say that like, they don't really got more power, but, but you know what I mean? Like in the yeah. Yeah. political yeah. power, yeah, exactly. And I, think, yeah. I think we're kind of seeing that in like real time right now. Cause it's like, there's plenty of, 
millionaires or just like powerful people in their in their own spaces. But look at Britney Griner, for example. There's right. so many people right. who are rooting for her to be free from rush. But there's like there's only so much you, you could can really do. do. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Like it's the it's on like the pol- uh, the politicians and the mm-hmm. the world leaders to actually make something happen. You think Trump would have got her out? <laughs> He yeah. probably could. I probably feel like because he has that relationship with Russia, like, like that. yeah. probably, but that, well, that's, that's also Sweden, though. Yeah, compared to Russia, yeah, that's Russia is crazy. That's probably I losing now with Putin and yeah, shit. I'm not saying. I don't, don't want to like, speak on hypotheticals. Excuse me, so yeah. <laughs> He definitely would have. Yeah. He, he has a relationship. Probably would have got her out. Yeah, for sure. But even then, right now, I think like they're using her as kind of just you know a political pawn to you know they like I even read something like in order for her to be free, she has to accept like plead guilty, and she did. And trade. They also want people to, on their end that yeah, were in prison to, be, to like, come out. To yeah, exchange first. like prisoners. Yeah, basically. Oh shit! I did see that. Yeah, yeah. See that, yeah. It's definitely fucked up. I think like at the end of the day, I think it's good that like you're starting to think about like ways, especially because when it comes down to like the way that community organizing works, at least like in Boston, like there's so many different divides, you feel me? Yeah. Cause everyone wants something different. At the end of the day, it's like, obviously we all want like liberation for our people, but I think right. we all go about those things in different ways where we're yeah. starting to think about if I have liberation, then that has to come at the expense of someone else's liberation, which isn't the case. You feel me? Yeah. It's like in order for any of us to be free, like all of us have to be free. Right. You feel me? And I think as you continue to move forward, what I would want to see from you is just someone that's like observing like your brand from the outside looking in. It's right. like continuing to find ways to like advocate for that and utilize like the platform in order to like voice those thoughts. Especially because like you said, there's gonna be people that are like looking to you mm. as like almost almost like as like this like public figure. Yeah. You know what I mean? To speak on these things. And mm. if you do like hate politics without like trust that you do, it's like gonna be important that you like make that very clear to people mm-hmm. instead of like taking like political stands and political views or like even like Entering into that foray, you're able to instead try your best to like articulate your thoughts from like a human level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I think you're doing a good job of so far. That's dope. So, I, appreciate I appreciate that. Bro. I was gonna say yeah. too. Sure. I think kind of like what she was alluding to, and mentioning like how you have certain ties and all that. I think it's important to have like a council oh, to yeah. go to and just have yeah. someone to, people to sit down with, like you said, with your family, where you could just talk and say like, "These are my thoughts and things. These are my feelings. What's the best way for me to communicate that?" Mm. Since I'm the one that's kind of like the leading. I'm not gonna say figure, but yeah. almost like the person that does have the spotlight. Yeah, on, no, you know, that, yeah. I'm that person, so what's the best way for me to really represent my thoughts in mm. a way that's not harmful or anything yeah. like that? Or like you said for too, sure. that can't be misinterpreted. Yeah. And I feel that 100% of my heart. It's like, yo, I've been said that. When I put something out there, I wanna make sure it's very clear my intentions and what it is that I'm doing moving forward so that people mm. can't misinterpret it. At least you know my stance and how you feel about it and how you wanna look at it. At that point, it's on you. Yeah. But in terms of when I did put it out to share with, you know exactly how I what felt. I, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, so I was gonna yeah. say like even more significant too is like with that council as well is like making sure that it's like built of like the people who are like impacted by a lot of the issues that you're working to like yeah. you know what yeah. I mean yeah. have addressed. You know what I mean? It's like similar thing to how when we were talking about you know what I mean Roe v Wade being overturned. It's like we didn't want to necessarily just like occupy the space on our own. It's like you want to make sure that folks that are being directly mm-hmm. impacted by these things and who have like you know different thoughts and opinions that are oftentimes overlooked have that platform as well. So I think it's also about lending the platform as well. You know what yeah. I mean? yeah. yeah. And everything y'all said was valid. I think you know even seeing what you got going on with your brand it's kind of it's actually cool what like clothes and fashion can do because you can be indirectly making a statement through someone else. Yeah, like for example, facts, if Kyrie Irving is like it's a pregame and he's wearing your clothes, that's a statement because that's on national TV at that yeah. point, and he's using your clothes as a way to like basically validate your political like 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 how you like how mm-hmm. you feel about the matter. For example, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, that, that that time was crazy. Um, you know, like like. I remember, I think the, so the first NBA player I sent it to was was Nikhil Alexander Walker. That was in the in the bubble, and then um, he told me that Shea Gilgis Alexander, who's more known than him, Nikhil's yeah. still you know pretty obviously an NBA player, but yeah, but Shea's like the franchise Shea's, player, Shea's, on yeah, the and Thunder, you know yeah. fashion is kind of. <laughs> I mean, who's on the Thunder? That's that nigga Chet Holger. That nigga coming for that nigga's player, man. man. Yeah, that man's gonna get bodied, bro. <laughs> in the I'm man, he's gonna be against Giannis a little bit. He's been playing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's he's not, been a, that's not a bad issue to worry about, though. Put some weight on now, so you complain. Yeah, if you put some weight on, I'm yeah. still waiting for Brady. I'm gonna put some weight on, bro. Like, yeah, Ingram's I, don't yeah. I, I fuck with Ingram. I don't yeah. know. I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> did it, kind of. Giannis did it. But nah, like, he yeah. Got a little yeah. Bigger. So, like, even getting these connections with these players, did it start? Uh, did they reach out to you or you reaching out to them? So, uh, Nikhil, I reached out to him. This is in a bubble. He answered me in like three minutes. I was like, oh shit, like, it's crazy. Right. And then, but him, he he rocked with, you know, 
it's always the message that hits first. That's what I that's what I fuck with. Cause like mm-hmm. I don't feel like I'm the best designer. I really don't, but I do feel like I have an important thing to say, which yeah. to me is more important. True. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So so it's the message that really hit. He was like, damn, you know, he like, you know, he really he was really fucking with it. So then um Can I have context real quick? Like during the bubble, this is twenty twenty, bro. Like the yeah. political Yeah, it was like a, it, there's just a high. lot going on yeah. you feel me especially with the bubble there was even questions on like should we even continue this bubble mm. because it might be distracting from the bigger issue of like the Black Lives Matter movement I was yeah. definitely one of them niggas like yo pause this shit definitely did <laughs> pause that shit I'm a Lakers fan keep the, I'm glad <laughs> they kept that shit on bro. them niggas they definitely should have stopped that shit ain't count nigga Shut the fuck up. Yo, you might have to scrap right now. I did not think you would say that. No bullshit. Right. You were a nigga for saying it, though. Mickey, we all was thinking it. Nah, bro. Why does it not count? The, we're the, not getting the into this. It's, 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 it's already happened. Right? It's already happened. Definitely so should anyway. postpone the season, though. I agree. I don't think so, yeah. because you feel me? Like, that's when the players took it upon themselves to, like, have statements. And, like, you niggas yeah. could, you could see when... The, the court. Bro, what, what is two hours of watching a basketball game going to really deter someone from, like, stepping outside and doing some shit, bro? What is having it going to do? Mm-hmm. Yes. What is who has a having it gonna do? Because if they do, like when you do decide to tune into the channel, there's gonna be those statements. They have the statements on the back of their jersey, and to people, they'd be like, "Oh, that's Freedom. not much. That's not shit." But like, that's still. You remember what was on the back of LeBron's jersey? Hmm? You remember what was on the back of five players' jerseys? I know the the statements. Like, well, so, do you remember what was on the back of five I can players' jerseys? Tell you jerseys? what they touched on, bro. That's not ask black people, bro. I twenty uh, during twenty twenty. You asking me from two <laughs> years ago? Come on, I forgot who had the other facts. It really had black people on I the screen. No, no, it was like Black Lives say. Matter, bro. There was like uh, something about education too. But no, what I'm like, saying like, is, quality freedom. In that moment of time, though, they could have easily like I see what you're saying. Random things, but that. Two hour <laughs> slot could have been a, a sit down rather than a game. And it was bro. a pandemic. They could have been, been doing shit, shit with that. Nigga, like, niggas was in there catching COVID and shit, like, bro. Fucking Rudy Gobert and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was before the bubble. <laughs> the that's that's what that's what they I do. I think the time could have been used for other things rather than oh, we have some statements on the back of our jersey and you get to see that. I promise you. I think a conversation. I think I think one did it. Chris Paul since he's the. President of um, he's the president of the NBA Players Association. Yeah, you feel me? Him yeah. sitting down and actually speaking about that shit would have been way more valuable than just having a statement on their back. But they did right. during like post game interviews and shit like that. They, niggas just don't watch the shit. game, bro. Like they're I'm not gonna watch that shit. Talk. Bro, I'm y'all act like basketball. if the NBA is not to, like if the NBA didn't have that season, like niggas was still not gonna watch Netflix or some shit. Like they are going. <laughs> like, okay, but the point is, right, if you care, have to contribute you're to going. Nothing's gonna stop you. If you care, nothing's gonna stop you. Hey, if you man, don't we care, we're gonna go circle. So that's why you wasn't outside. After that, I was outside. After that, I was dead outside. After that, bro, I was outside all those times. That whole summer, bro. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll agree with, I'll agree with you For the sake of moving on Exactly I want to get but back to what you were saying I was watching the games for sure But I was outside During the weekend <laughs> <laughs> That's what I had to say bro. All right, but yeah, yeah. So That was just the context But you you reaching out to Nikhil Oh yeah Um. So yeah He just really liked the message And um You know he, So he He uh, showed mad love And then he He actually offered he was like, yeah, the, the NBA is doing like this all black designer thing. So I was able to send it to him and I think they had like this little event. So I think all the players were like all black designers. Um, everything was black on in there. So that was pretty dope. It's fine. Um, yeah. And then uh, and then uh, he said that Shay, I, you know, Shay's his cousin. So he came over. He was like, yo, this is the hardest T-shirt in your collection. And that's when I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, like this is the this is like the best dressed player in the NBA saying that. You know what I'm saying? Like he just told him to kill that my shirt was the hardest in his entire collection, you know what I'm saying? So that's when I knew, you know, cause this man, this man got like, you know, he got the gallery department, he got all that, you know what I'm saying? But for him to say that my shit was, was harder just because of the message, that's when I was like, you know, I, if I get the design part right, I feel like I'll be unstoppable. You know, I, I feel like, like I'll do everything I want to do. gallery department. Not right now, later, I want to talk about that shit. <laughs> yeah, no yeah, we, can talk that. <laughs> we can talk about that for sure. I but, was going to um, ask you though, what's your creative process like? Well, well you, you jumping, you jumping. Ah. Because there's, there's talk- other players and shit like that that he's reached out to. Right. And I think like even like I, I'm, I'm genuinely with the Kyrie thing because yeah, Kyrie's the, someone who like you could even see the turbulence that's going on right yeah. now because he decided to sit out for his own political agenda yeah. or like take you know personal reasons and he's always had these like yeah. statements and yeah, you know Ky- him co-signing like the the clothes like yeah. that's big that was the that was definitely the most meaningful one um for sure. Uh, Cause I mean everybody knows Kyrie's been my favorite player since I was bro. Like one of my first pictures on my phone, if I go back all the way down, is Kyrie. So um, a wallpaper, yeah. that's real nigga shit. Yeah, he was he was my wallpaper for my phone. My so, so yeah, the, that was definitely a full circle moment. I remember when I finished the design of the shirt, the first shirt. I was like, I feel like you know, I feel like I need to see Kyrie in this. And actually, it was actually a year 
apart from when I said that to when he bought it. So mm-hmm. it was wild. Um, but yeah, so his I reached out to his sister. Um, now we're, we're actually pretty cool. Um, she got back to me, and um, yeah, bro, we've kind of done each other each other's you know favors. She got it to him, and then I've promoted her stuff you know with my platform. But um, but yeah, bro. So he she saw she saw the pieces, and she's like, I want everything. So they got you know they got they got everything. And um, yeah, bro, he's been he's kind of literally. I think anything I drop, he'll get type thing. So it's it's really that's crazy big. just yeah, because because you know having someone. It's my whole thing is you know let's have a conversation. Like that's what you know whether it's whether it is you know going to you know a political place and you know let's have those conversations. Even though I don't like politics, I'm willing to have that conversation because you know I'm willing to be uncomfortable and you know really get you know if it's gonna take uncomfort to get to a change. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. so. So someone like Kyrie, this man lives in uncomfort like daily. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, time. exactly. So to have him and you know some someone who's very strong about their beliefs support it like that, um, and I feel like some of our beliefs definitely align. Um, it was just super dope, bro, to see him to see him rocking it. You think the world's flat? No, <laughs> no, no, sir. No, sir. You gonna say some shit like that on E, bro? <laughs> Come on, man. Going post, back man. to my question, though. Like, <laughs> oh, along those pieces, what was your creative process like coming up with those pieces and now, like, coming up with the new pieces that you've, like, displayed yeah. in the fashion show that was recently at Bentley and stuff like oh, that? Like, yeah, yeah, Um. So, I, bro, the first shirt I made was so bad, bro. It was so bad. It was like, <laughs> the, the first logo was bad. It was like a, my idea was like, it was, so really, I never rushed the creative process. I feel like rushing the creative process is the worst thing you could do. Mm-hmm. Um. So I always, I always really like let the ideas come to me, um, and so I, f- I always say that's my, that's my process. Like it's, it's harder to explain, but that's the best way I could explain it. It's like really just letting it come to you, um, because that's when it's fully authentic. I feel like you know yeah. what I'm saying. So, so uh, yeah, bro. So the, the first logo it was like a, it was like pink and yellow. It went, it was kind of an old back to that volume clothing thing I had in, in my freshman year of high school. Yeah. Like it was like kind of street art based and stuff, but it was like a 3D logo. The C was this way, the R was that way. The, uh, every letter was different, a different way to kind of show like these represent the different views, but they mm-hmm. all come together to make something, you know, special. And I was like, this, it looks ass. It looks ass <laughs> on a t-shirt. It looked ass on everything. I was like, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's when I, you know, um, I really like that like medieval font look. So I was like, this is really, you know, cut, you know, really clean. And then the, the change requires accepted views that's under it is kind of made to look like the paint that people use to like uh write on like um boards and stuff like that at protests and different things like that so that was kind of the idea behind that it, it just it goes back everything i do i want to be it to be able to be a protest in itself you know mm-hmm. so um yeah man all that all that came and then the shirts uh it was just the, the same thing on the back. It was like the paint font to make it look like a protest, and it's like kind of like what you see on the on the boards when they you know um, put it's them like up. A, it's a, like a brush stroke. Yeah, like exactly. A, yeah. And then um, on the front, on the front, that's I feel like when you know, when you're walking, that's what people see first. So I was always like, what can I put on this to where people it draws eyes? You know, it draw. I remember my man's I, the. I don't know if y'all know the the flower design. It's the yeah. tired, the tired one where it has all the names oh, yeah. of the victims like and stuff. Like one of them, like the petals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Falling, yeah. yeah, that's George yeah. Floyd. The petal was falling because he was kind of like the last straw. Um, that's how that's how I looked at that one. Um, but yeah, my man said he got stopped like three times in one day just wearing it. You know, and that's what Fuck. I was. Like, that's what oh. I. That's what I was aiming for. Like my that brain went right to there. a whole another place. Like stop, like police stop. And I was like, oh shit, yeah, that's yeah. terrible. But that's like, nice stop yeah. in a good way. Like yeah. people notice. Oh yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, like that, yeah. Nah, so yeah, that's that's, just, kind, that's kind of the process. I fuck with crazy. shit like that, bro. Cause I I can't stand like Balenciaga, Balenciaga, Balenciaga. Yeah, yeah, like you feel yeah. me? Like that. That's what people think drip is sometimes. Mm-hmm. So it's just like just brand logos on them. But like you know, when there's actually a bigger message, it's not just I don't know box logo, whatever the case mm-hmm. is. You know? Yeah. You know, I feel you. Do you feel like every piece has a message, or do you feel like sometimes you design purely out of um fashion? Uh, I'll say the next pieces I'm dropping, like this next collection, this is me like really trying to do that fashion shit for real. Like, cause like, I peep like the flare sweats and shit. From yeah. Norway, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that was, that was definitely experimental and stuff. Like even what he has on, like the, the shorts, mm-hmm. those is like, you know, just mm-hmm. something that people could just, see. cause my dad brought up a good point. You know, this is going back to the businessman in him and he was like, 
not everybody's gonna be able to rock a statement piece. You know, some people mm-hmm. can't pull that off for real. So mm-hmm. you know, making simple pieces and statement pieces, you know, yeah. that's kind of that's kind of the idea behind some of those. And yeah, those those are more fashion based and just more like every day. But I'll say my my next collection, every piece is strictly like yo, like if you put this on, like you like it, this to me, this is like designer mm-hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. before, I didn't feel like a designer. After this next collection, I, I I feel like a designer now. You know what I'm saying? Was that a full circle moment? Like going back to Bentley, you know, after dropping oh, out and yeah. like coming back, yeah, and you know, being able to display mm-hmm. your your business and, and your brand. Oh, absolutely! On that it was stage. it was crazy actually because freshman year I applied to be in it, but I got denied. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's all love too, and, you know. I I would have denied myself too. That's when I had that bad logo and you know all the <laughs> designs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, just to be able to, you know, like, I remember after being denied, I was like, damn, like, I got to bounce back. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I got to get my get back for real. So, uh, you know, we didn't have it last year because I was going to be in it last year, but you know, COVID kind of messed everything up. So, so yeah, man. So being able to come back and really do it and the, the, the turnout was crazy, you know? Um, but yeah, man, it was just, it was definitely a full circle moment just to see it, you know, that freshman year, Lou, you know, being able to tell you, you know, you did it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you you got your got back, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. What are like? I'm curious to know, like, what, what what are the influences? Like, did y'all see? Okay, first of all, I gotta add some content. Did y'all <laughs> see that video of Kanye holding up like the plate for the billionaire? No. No one seen that. Could no. you look that up real quick? No, I didn't see that. But all that to say, like, you know, um, I'm curious to know your influences. Mm. You know, yeah. whether um, it's I don't know Virgil, Kanye, or even yeah, someone yeah. different. Of course, those are the you know the, the main ones, the Virgils, the Kanyes. Um, Cause I only bring that up because it's like what Kanye had to do to kind of like break through the space. Cause yeah. for so long it was yeah, gatekeep. Yeah, you know, he, and he now it's like a lot in that fashion. And now he people had to do a lot. To, yeah, to value players. like black designers a whole lot more because of like pioneers like yeah. like Virgil and Kanye. And Shit, not even the designers just. Black bodies, like you know, how many yeah, rappers yeah, be yeah. at these events now because they want to invite them because that's the cool thing to do. Yeah, they invited, right, yeah. bro. Seeing niggas like Offset and um, who else was there at the? Was who was it? There. Cardi, yeah. Yeah, facts with the makeup, yeah. but um, <laughs> yeah, nah, just wow. just, wow. just wow. like these niggas are like guaranteed invites now at these type yeah, of yeah, events. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like it's crazy to see, like, like just yeah, 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 casual. Wow. Yeah. Crazy to see that shit. That shit was bad funny. Really interesting seeing the shift in that culture. It's like how little energy that nigga had when he was saying it too. That shit was mad. That was actually kind of eerie. I don't know. I, I actually haven't seen this video myself. So I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm about to say. <laughs> 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 I don't know. They said this was wild. <laughs> so I was like, what really happens with Peter and maybe Kanye? What we do on our way to a Vogue event: ribs and French fries. Oh, yeah. he's holding the pl- Oh, that's crazy. I didn't even realize that. Huh. This is what really happens with Peter, A.V., Kanye. Yeah, I'm assuming that's Kim talking? Yeah. Ribs and French fries. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. I don't know how much truth there is, but apparently, like, he was... Because he was trying to break into the space, like, Kanye Shit. was interning for him. Nigga, holding that nigga food. Kanye God, talked about interning for a lot of companies yeah, though, going overseas that, to work out. I'm saying, I forgot which company he worked nigga to work So I think it was Javon. I'm curious to know from y'all, like uh, seeing golly. that video, because it's two things, right? You could either be like, "You do it." What the fuck is he doing? Or you could see it as like, "Oh, he's actually putting his ego aside to like maybe you know be able to see the bigger picture." Or you could really just look at it and be like. Yo, what is going Stand on up, with these guys? Like, I, I, I mean, I see all perspectives, but you nah, got a lap in two hands. I see bro. all of them. I ain't seen this shit. He's sitting down. He got space to his right. Don't play in your lap. Hold the other one with your hand, nigga. Fuck you, need it. That's OG. I seen where he said he was going to intern, but I didn't know it was that type of intern. But I guess, like, interning is like a whole, like, type shit. Oh, no, bro. I ain't holding that nigga food, bro. I can't. Why he eat french fries and ribs? And he got the nigga to the left of him. He's like, that's your man's bro. Why he like what the Facts. fuck? I don't know. Cause don't like, know. Of, like people just you know they brought up even the meat mill like doing Too the bunny hop though. for for Michael Rubin yeah, and all that. It'd be so, weird. They, they had yeah. Jack Harlow getting carried on them niggas' oh, backs and shit. That, that, <laughs> that pissed me off. I can't lie. That was wild. Yeah. Yeah. I think shit. academics said like hey, something man. like he, 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 he made a statement on that of just like how like we like black you know like stars just wanted like center be around like these billionaires. Yeah, they just stand up for themselves, bro. Have some self respect. I think it just goes back to like that validation that, you know, people always seek. And I feel like, especially in black culture, you see it just because, you know, we're so 
like demonize our whole life you know what i'm saying we're, we're always looked down upon so you're always seeking validation from something from someone yeah. so i feel like that that kind of that might be a root of that but I, I mean, yeah accurate I, niggas is also like you ever seen that <laughs> the the video or the, the meme where the girl was like you could tell black people used to be slaves <laughs> Type shit. When she posted nah, that shit on Twitter. was the context of that. It though. was like this girl talking about how she's like very like subservient to her man. Like she mm. loves like serving him like no matter what, and he doesn't like reciprocate it. And he's like mm. a spoiled back, but she loves doing it anyway. She's like, I don't care. I love serving him this and this. What does her man look like? I don't know. He didn't get. We didn't get. I didn't even finish watching the video. I watched like the first. It was like it was almost three minutes. I heard talking about it. I watched like the first two. I was like. I, I understand what you mean But I think it's like Part of it is that like You know what I mean It's ingrained into like Black American culture yeah. To almost like serve As like this subservient figure Because that's who we've been In this country forever right. You feel me Like yeah. no matter what So it's not It's like It's on top of what you're saying About like it being mm. like This like approval Based mm. thing that we're like Searching for You know what I mean It's also like On the opposite end or even like just like in parallel, you know what I mean? It's that we don't know anything else. Yeah, you it's feel in me? Our nature now. Like even you. when we see it, even when we've accomplished all of our goals and everything that we like, we're always still gonna see like ourselves and like yeah. that subservient role. And part of that is like a societal issue. And part of that is that it's ingrained into our DNA. You feel me? Crazy, but it's yeah. like trauma based responses that we have to certain shit. You feel me? Even like small shit that we do, where it's like niggas always see each other, niggas be seeing each other's fits, whatever. It's like oh, I'm trying to get like you. That's the same shit niggas was doing <laughs> on the auction block type shit. You feel me? Because if you, Bro, I always took that statement as hate though. For real? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying though. Because like, like it's not it's not hate per se, but it's like I, I don't want like, 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 a strong like, word, but it's like yeah, like a nigga trying to get like you he ain't gonna say I'm trying to get like you, bro. He just gonna do that shit. Yeah. Type shit. <laughs> <laughs> like shit like oh, that from like the auction book. Like, yeah, where niggas is like, I'm not trying to get sold, nigga. Yeah, yeah. This nigga, this nigga is buff, nigga. This nigga is strong. He's young, this nigga is lit. Yeah, I'm trying to meet me. I'd go with him. I'd go with him. So I'm saying type shit. Like that's where some of this shit stems from. It's just like yeah, it's interesting because like you know you can get all the validation in the world from your own people but you're still seeking you know validation from outside sources Thanks. but the reason i even brought up that out like the different perspective is because like maybe as insane as this like <laughs> is appears to be and, and it looks to be <laughs> is could it in a bro like, into, ask your questions oh, well, well, you, you doing that for me no, nigga. Exactly. So like, what is it to discuss, bro? But like, I, I wouldn't do it. Are you but, a billionaire, nigga? <laughs> but, but, imagine if, but imagine if this sacrifice, a lot, um, be, because of these sacrifices, I it got, you, it, like the fashion world is so much more progressive to the point nigga, where like that shit's not. This nigga play ain't do shit, no, bro. I know no, that for a fact. It's not, it's, no, no, no. I know that. No, nah, but it's, it's not the play. It's not, it's not the play. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying the play. I'm saying but him, like like the humility. Yeah, hell yeah. He had to go do a bunch of shit, bro. You got to watch that interview he did with Breakfast Club. No, I'm, I'm I even think talking about, about the, the I think about what even what even Clark said when he was on here. He's like, "Yo, if I gotta, I forget what he said. He yeah, said, he's if I gotta mop a floor yeah, to you know, about his internship get a look, I'm gonna mop the fuck out of that floor. That's it's different like, than holding a nigga. It plate, is. Though. It is. That's holding why I'm bringing it up. Though. That's why I'm bringing it up. Because there's a there's a threshold. I feel like there's a level where it's like there's just certain things for the integrity for the integrity of who you are. It's just like. You don't do that. And the integrity you know I mean? of our people, my nigga. Come well, on, so now. Like, so so like, I, I don't even want to keep caping for it, but like, I'm just wondering, like, what if he was politely was just like, "Yo, can you hold this for me, real quick?" And it was like five seconds, and this just happened to be the. But like, can you record that shit? Like, I don't know. Like, know. know. There's a lot of things. It's, it's different. Like, it's really different because they recorded it and narrated. Yeah, it's like for what? Yeah, he doing this shit. He didn't even see all this shit. He know what it looked like. He didn't even look at that. Yeah, like, why are you recording this shit? Like, off for real. Came off of that. <laughs> Nigga, I was like, really cool. Cool. like no bullshit. How did it leak? <laughs> why <laughs> why, why are we able to see it right now? You, this could have oh, really stayed on her yeah. eye cloud. Yeah. 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 The fact that she even pulled her phone out is because she's consciously thinking, like, this is some funny shit. Yeah. Facts. Like, she's like, like, look at this you nigga. She sees the wrong, yeah. 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 wrong in that shit. You feel me? With the flash, too. She sees her husband, too. I said she sees the wrong in it. Imagine you in the whip with your shorty and you holding up a plate for a nigga, bro. You should be like, yo, what the fuck? Nah, for real. That's like, yo. It's probably like this fashion shit now. Yeah. That phone is flying in the air. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so quick. <laughs> I do. I do have yeah. a question. Delete that. Yeah, what's, first up? Place. what's kicks, bro? And his niggas renting shoes now, bro. Bro, so yeah, I'm. I'm not working with them no more. But oh, but, you talking yeah. about like, like brand deals? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that was, kicks? that's kicks, bro. Bro, yeah. People, um, yeah, man. I mean, I'm technically I'm not on contract with them no more. But we still. They still be sending me emails and shit, but mm. I, I don't know if I can say this, but, but, but fuck it, dog. Yeah, bro. I was, um, <laughs> so they would send me, so for me, it was good. Like, I'm an yeah. influencer, you know, sure, I'll take some shoes to post in, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can send it back. I don't Facts. care. And most of them, they gave me a discount so I could buy them. I, I bought most of them after. So mm. it was cool for me. 
But if I was a customer, I would I would never do that. How did, how you, that what, just like, selling it to them though. That's yeah. So, yeah. Ah, that is a two part like, question. Uh, like, <laughs> before we can like get deeper into that, what is the business model? Like because I, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not too sure about yeah. what Kicks is. Mm. So Kicks World is a it's like a, yeah, it is kind of like a shoe renting service. So so really, what it's it's like you have they give you they give you like three budgets. It's like I think the first one's like a hundred. 200, maybe 200, 300, whatever. So whatever. Game fly shit, like send the game shoes fly, back. And so it's like, like, it's like, yeah, it's like you get like, so say you pay like 100, you'll probably get like $300 worth of shoes. That shit was really, mm. in reality, could get you like one. Then you pay like the 200, they'll give you more. You could probably get like two or three. Oh, so more. It's like a, okay, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, okay. so it's kind of, it's like that. And so, yeah. I'm thinking like you're renting the individual shoes. Like now, the more you pay, the more access you have to whatever so the, is in the pool yeah, to exactly, grab from. Exactly. Oh, so you can rent the same shoe again if you wanted to right after. Uh, yeah. So uh, literally so, on some game fly shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So get fly. So I feel like so I feel like I I I promoted it for like people who are trying to be influencers as well. You mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. Like yo, because. In reality, like people it's aren't gonna want to say the same air, air forces. They're not gonna want to see. That's what I was saying. So it's, it's kind of interesting because it, it depends if you're willing to make that investment for mm -hmm. real. Like, okay, like let me ask some because then the more shoes you have, the more versatile you can get with the fits. Yeah. So that's kind of how what I was telling people. Like, yo, know, if you mm -hmm. want to, you know, be like an influencer, if you want to reach a certain level, you're probably gonna have to add like you know a different kind of collection to it. So if you're willing to pay that, that's a kind of you know that's a good idea because then you could. Yo, I could get like um some loafers. I could get some Air Forces yeah, here. So like, let me do this. Let me do that. What about replicas? Hold on. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> hold on. I'm about to say the point. Because that's going to even hold up. Because this thing. Once you get the kicks, how long you get to keep the kicks for? It's a month. A month? Yeah. And so say I get the kicks, I beat the fuck out them shits. Like, <laughs> they, they, they charge you, you for that? that shit out? Nah, they, they said wear them how you want. Like, that's crazy. A, so they I have, can get that like, shit. Wait, how? Because they have like, they have like, Professional restores that they work with, and they, they work with like this company called Rejuvenator. What if you really? Oh, oh I, I say like, what if you yeah. skate in them yeah. shits? Like, you can skate what, in them yeah. shits and skate them shoes I out. Think obviously, really. I think obviously, like if you really like mess them up, they probably gonna mm. charge you like bad. Yeah. Like if they're like unsavageable, probably mm. they probably charge you. I see. But I see. If, mm. you, if you you could wear them like every single day, I feel, shit. Shit. I feel like there, I feel like there's even room for a business like that because there is a cult like there. It, there's a there's culture people, of yeah, like literally like yo you can't it. wear the same piece again like yeah, you know like yeah. if, if something's so different maybe shoes is a little bit different because you could wear the same yeah, shoes you can and, like as like, long as you yeah. have different fit but you know if it's like especially like clothes like you wear it one time or post it at least if you already post it it's mm. like you can't post it again, again like that's yeah. just the it's stigma just that, it's, that, it's stick, yeah so it is a stigma well, that's kind of that yeah that's kind of the idea really? behind it and it honestly when i first heard i was like damn that's actually mad smart but then i was like you know, there's like a certain pride that people have. Like, am I willing, really willing to rent some shoes for? I was about to say, when it comes in, you know how you said they restore, right? So does it come mm. looking like it's brand new? It looks like yeah. it's like nah, been all restored. My, all that them look like, and some oh, are brand crazy. new. Some don't send yeah. brand new, but especially if it, yeah, influencer, you really yeah. trying to impress this yeah. nigga. You have an option too. There's like a brand new and you have a used option. Mm, so there, there, there's there's that too. So yeah. there's a lot of ways we where where. where and what's places a nigga from running off with them shit? Like your cars <laughs> on that? He's trying to find the new door dash hatch, bro. Like, I probably just that was nuts. Nice. I seen it on Twitter. I was like, that's I, I missed out. Apparently, yeah. Facts. Maybe there's but like anyways. a contract or some shit that but they just had this on. I'm really yeah, curious shit. to know, like, as Terms you know, conditions because we haven't had influencers on on the platform. Mm -hmm. We've had plenty of like artists and stuff like that. But as an influencer, like, because that's a big thing. I mean, pause, 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 pause. Do you yourself artist, call yourself an influencer? Do you, you want to be titled I that? Uh, I don't, but I, that's why, you know, that's kind of what it is. Like, you know, mm. like you're using your platform and like there's brands collaborating with you so that they can like based on like, yo, if people fuck with you, they're like, oh, I'm going to fuck mm. with the brand, like type shit. Yeah. So I'm, I'm how much of a responsibility is, especially because we just talked about this, like kicks world shit mm -hmm. where you have to align with the brand to work with them. Or is it like, oh, if it's enough bread, like I throw whatever on yeah. if you're paying me. Like um, where? How do you gauge that when you're working yeah. with brands? Um, early on, I feel like I feel like my mindset has changed on it. Early on, I was very like, "Yo, if I'm not rocking with this brand, I'm not doing it." You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm not doing it. I I never and I never I still feel that way. I just I never want to push something that's not authentic to me. You know what I'm saying? Because then I'm not really if I'm not like I feel like my content will be good if I don't really mess with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, obviously there is. I think everybody has that bread limit where it's like, yo, if they paying in my, if they paying that right amount of bread, I might do it. But um, but I feel like I turned down Fashion Nova. Like I can't. I it, 
Me personally, yeah, you I turned on the fashion Nova I, men. I can't do that, bro. He wasn't just, trying to be, you know what I mean? Was you know what I, mean? I, I was just like, bro, like they cutting so many checks, it's crazy. No, I just feel, I feel like a lot of brands. Sheen might be knocking on your door next. Can't bro. do, can't do that one either. I just feel like a lot Damn. of brands, a lot of brands do steal from smaller brands too. That's I mean, fast fashion. So that fast fashion, so that, 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 that fast fashion I just business model. I can't really, you know, I can't push I that because that's never been who I am. You know what I'm saying? You actually use Gillette. Nigga, hell no. What the hell? Bro? <laughs> I didn't know if he was really going to say that. I have no facial hair, dog. I, I, yo, you don't use Gillette. That's bro, okay. my agency, my agency uh, hit me up, and it was like, yo, we got this deal for Gillette. I was like, why would they? I, I've never, I, no post have facial hair. So, That's okay. crazy. But then I was like, you know, they're going for, I guess they're going for that look, like to have a more clean shape. Actually, he's not supposed to get like that. So then I was like, that's how you make sure it's always clean. always. I feel like Gillette's bust, bro, for mad different shit. Cause I don't shave my you, beard either, but I use yeah, bro. What the deodorant? Nah, I don't even know they made deodorant. That's a <laughs> funny. Yeah, I use I use Gillette to like cut my like my like sideburns a little bit, like to push them back. Mm. Like I don't use like I use like they're like straight razors. But that, that's interesting though. Like, like hearing that's you the say only like, thing that I do. You know, like that's yeah, yeah, but. That's even interesting. Like, even a minute, like, yeah, I don't really use it, but they right, cut the yeah. check and it worked. Yeah. Cause, like, even that, Gillette, they from over here. I, I, I was like bullshit. looking for the profile. I'm like, <laughs> as someone who, like, seen, seen the rise and fall of true religion, I was like, yo, I, I appreciate someone keeping it going. <laughs> I feel no, I'm bullshit. Saying, like, yeah, 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 bro. Like, I feel like it ever died. No bullshit. I feel like, like, I don't know. There's a point in time, though. There's a point in time, though. There's a point in time, though, where people are kind of like, Speaking down on true religion, like oh, because they file for sure. bankruptcy. Everybody Once they file for bankruptcy, yeah. people are like, oh, true religion ain't popping. Yeah. Yeah. Niggas are trying to come at that shit. But like, nigga, they shit on the file 16, for bankruptcy bro. and shit. That nigga Nigo yeah. have to sell his shit. Hey, bro, <laughs> I don't know. At that point in time, niggas are doing that to baby. I feel I like know. it's because the access to them. Like, I feel like the more limited something is, the more you know, yeah. the higher value we're gonna put on it. But then it's like everybody at Brock down high got that shit. Give them shits. Like people look down at, but those mm. are still like out of all the pants I've ever owned, bro. Those are still the highest quality pants bro, I've ever had. They're actually really good quality and. So, like some of it the isn't my level. style, but like the everything buckle. I've worn, I put on it. It's so good. It's mm. it's stretchy. Like uh, that's what I really mess with the stretchiness of it. It's like I hate wearing jeans and being uncomfortable. You getting but paid to the, say that? No, huh? no, nah, 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, nah. I actually, I, I actually almost turned down True Religion too, just because of how yeah. much I had to post. Like I'm posting this shit. Like I think three times a month. Oh, so there's like a like, requirement. Yeah, and so mm. it's like, damn, like it might take away from my other fits and you know fits that I'm actually curating and stuff. Like they kind of give me like a pool of like clothes to choose from. And then I could style it based on that. That's interesting. But not all the pieces I was really rocking with. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, like if I post this, like I'm not really rocking with. Like I hate that feeling of not yeah, liking yeah. what Would I post. Would you be able to saying? customize the pieces that they give you? I did like certain like certain things. I hemmed the ends, you know what I'm saying? Right. Did certain right. things like that to where it could fit more of my style, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I so could, it's definitely yeah. like a balancing act between cause like the reason people even come to the page, first of all, yeah. is for the fashion. So right. if, it, if that's not aligning with it, then the check is not enough. Exactly. To, that's to, one, that's that's always been my mindset. Like a fuck with up future it. Yeah, checks. exactly. So so let me ask you this: because you're talking about like some of the brands you collaborated with and your agency setting it up. You're represented by Levin Agency. So how did that come about? How you know? I guess the word is collaborative. Are they in what you're trying to do? Like, mm-hmm. just talk about that real quick. I was very like weary of agencies because I was like, yo, I, I don't want to sign somewhere and they telling me what I got to do. Like they telling me what I got to post. Like that's, that's not why I started. Like that's not why I started posting my fits. Like I never had that intention, you know what I'm saying? To, to sign to agency or anything like that. It's really just been to showcase my fashion. So if I can't do that, I'm not going to sign, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I let them know, you know, we had that, you know, we had that conversation and they were very, very transparent. So they reached out to you. You reached out to They me. reached out to me. They yeah. reached out to you. Um, and so, and by this time, like Crave is already kind of like yeah, yeah, Crave, yeah. I, I'd, I'd say they're like two separate entities for real. Like, obviously, I'm able to promote Crave through what I do, like as an influencer. But Crave, Crave was individual. first, and then yeah. the influencer came after. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, bro. So, uh, uh, they were like, you know, we're we're not gonna force you to sign anything. We're just gonna present deals to you. That's our job. And then you know they get a certain they get a certain cut. And I was like, you know, that's that's smooth. You know, I can do that. Mm. Sounds valid. Yeah. So, did you want to have the? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did want him to go back to that question, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Replica shit. Nigga, oh, you don't like, even know his own question. No, I was like, bro, both of y'all niggas looking at him like, what's up? You gotta, <laughs> but, uh, you gotta ask yourself. We, we we gonna throw it out there, but like, what do you expect him to say? Like, there, there's people following him for the fashion shit. He can't just you can't call sign reps, bro. That's if not he how wanted to, he could. Ah, this is, so my my take on because this, this is a running. Do you even understand no. why we bring this up though? 
Because this is a conversation we've been going back and forth on a couple of episodes now. I do this nigga wants to know. No, don't put that on my name. I'm sorry. 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 i on like the sites, you feel me? That's yeah, the yeah, only yeah. reason niggas try to flip that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the case is, I couldn't get my shit. shits off. They would sit in the box. He yeah. said, I bet you won't wear them to the pod. I said, I I will, but I never wore them after that, bro. I don't, I'm not trying to fake the funk yeah, so yeah. at all. But fake what I did say, even though that's not what I'm gonna do, I wouldn't knock anybody who would make that decision to do it. Yeah. Because of how like over I, I feel like just like the how predatory kind of like the overpricing is of the the after <laughs> the app, like no nah, I agree the re, uh, that the resale always, that's always been my take too really it's just like I respect people who do it just because I, under, I understand I don't even say respect I, I just want to knock it like that's no, it like, I, just I understand, understand like, where you're coming from how would you from feel if you seen a nigga wearing some some replica crave mm. that's a good I question. always say that shit to this nigga because it's like Cause then at that point it's like yo what the fuck? Nah, no, I ain't not predatory. Nigga. Nike's predatory. I, I work you bro. feel like that's hard though. No bullshit. Just cause like you got niggas really trying to be like you know try to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's when I'm like damn I might have made it for real. You. you know what I'm saying? But, but like, also, as it's, long as you not, but he's nah, taking nah, too much from you, nigga. Don't say I'm too much from you. He's also not. He's also not selling. What's it called? He's also not selling overpriced clothing and then like the ad like and it's not impossible to reach. I'm not even speaking on that. When you were like oh if a nigga copied your swag your flow. Bit yes, by bit I, and doing what I was doing, I was like, "Yeah, that's hard." Because that showed me I'm doing things right. You like, "Oh, that's crazy, that." But this nigga says she gonna fuck out of here. Don't say you want it. Don't say you want it. Don't say you would want it. Or, or, or like you wouldn't knock it. Like that's not what I. That was not the question. You said that's not hard. That's kind of hard. You say that's hard, but then you'd still be like, "That nigga's biting me though." Like, would you? Would you shut that shit down? Like, if you seen like, or would you like turn and shit? Or you just be like, fuck I it. Probably, I mean, I probably try to, yeah, I probably try to shut it down. Cause I mean, at the end of the, if it yeah. grows, bro, I've seen, um, shout out my boys. I'm uh, gonna lie on my name. I'm lying on everything now. Like, no, niggas, shut up. Um, no one's safe. No one's happy memories. You know, happy memories don't die. Like the shorts with the, the two, they got the two, they kind of that trademark two logo on happy the side. I, yeah. I don't think I'm familiar. They, it's like, bro, they, they, they're like, I think LA based, but yeah, bro, they, their shorts are like, they're probably like the best mesh shorts. In the, and as far as like Instagram mm -hmm. fashion, you know, goes, like people is all wearing them. But yo, you see so many fakes, so many fakes on like mm. diff, like random mm. websites. They might even be, you know, finessing people. They might not ship shorts, whatever. <laughs> so like, I feel like when it gets to that point, like you taking a little bit too much from my business, you know. What I'm now you're playing yeah. with my money, you know what I'm saying? But I think if it got, if it ever got to that point, then yeah, you kind of have to shut it down, like from as a as a, as a business move. Mm -hmm. But but personally, it's like yeah, like I feel like I would have made it, you know. People trying to, you know, I still and the same same thing. Like I see people trying to recreate my fits, and, yeah. you know, very yeah. si like a little Bro. too similar, you know what I'm saying? So then it's like. I thought about that the other day uh, too. Like, yeah, um, and it is kind of like a symbol of like you getting to a certain like height, but also that's a bad res representation. Mm -hmm. And I got I thought about that like seeing niggas with the um with the I've been seeing a lot of people with the easy size with the cars on it, like the cars mm -hmm. figures and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, bro, I do not like those at all. Like, yeah, bro, if somebody were to see that and that's their first introduction, like cars yeah, or some yeah, shit. Yeah, like, yeah, that's like, a bad. Yeah, like, that's, facts. For me, that's facts. And yeah. they would think that's for me. Like, I don't know. That's just yeah. that's my view. On no, that. I, I agree. Yeah. That that's definitely that's valid. Yeah, because then. You know, you messing up, now you messing with my the whole it's point your of the image brand. And your yeah, brand. Exactly. Nigga. Fuck the money, cause yeah. niggas, everybody can get money. You feel me? That ain't shit. But it's really the image and the brand that I feel like it affects more. I want to ask you this too, cause it's funny. I actually experienced it. Um, a lot of the times when I'm thinking about like you know, poses or concepts that I want to do for upcoming shoots, whatever. I go to the internet, Pinterest, and things like yeah, that. I'm yeah. just looking at things for inspiration. I'm going through pictures, bro. I see you pop up. <laughs> I'm like, what the fine. fuck? <laughs> so I'm like, yo, that's fine. I want to ask you, how do you feel about your likeness just being so public and it being so open to like criticism. Cause I saw a lot of people, you know, hyping you up like, oh, who's this? What's his at? Then they got people talking about, oh, like he's so and so wannabe or whatever. Yeah, it's like, yeah, how do you receive that? Sick. Um, I mean, man, it's just the way you take every, you gotta take everything with a grain of salt for real. So, like, um, you know, the same I think I think I, th I someone told me something before I like I was, around the time I started jumping, like popping off and stuff. Uh it was just like, you know, you gotta take the criticism, you got to take the hate the same way you take the love, yeah. you know? So mm. You're not as good as they say yeah. they are. You're not as bad as exactly, they say they are. Exactly. So I oh. think that's that's helped me stay very leveled. I don't, I've never once felt like I was above anybody or like, mm. you know, like, 
you know what I'm saying? Like, I never ever felt like that. I never compare myself to other creators or anything. Like, yeah. I never did that because that's that could get you in a very dark hole very quickly. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I prepared. I, I mean, hate's gonna come. You know, you know, you gotta prepare. I know people. They say the ASAP Rocky wannabe, the Travis mm-hmm. Scott wannabe. Man, people will say weird shit like Lil Nas X wannabe. I don't know where that came from. That's crazy. That's the both of y'all black. Seeing, black. Seeing, that's 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 all of them was just like, 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 like So then, then we, so then when you see that, it's like, yo, okay, they're just, the to me, that just shows you how you're not educated in what I'm doing. So yeah, it, for me, it's not really the pro- it's not really a problem. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, bro, that mm-hmm. that one, you know, when, when that person told me that, it just you know kept me level, like. I don't. I've, I'm still. You can ask anybody that knows me. I'm still the same exact way as before. This all you know happened. This culture yeah. didn't change anything. Should, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you spoke on it like that experience in your childhood, exactly. like that, prepared yeah. you for for moments like this because you know what it feels like to like maybe get too high mm-hmm. to to the sun or whatever the case is, and just you know just stay level. Exactly, because as 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 quick as it is, my my account is growing pretty fast. As quick as it grew, as quick as the love I saw from Crave. All that could be, you know, stripped away in, you know, moments. Seconds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, just yeah, man, just staying level. That's that's the most important thing I think going going forward. Oh. What's up, bro? Oh, that's real. Nah, that and it's dope to you know. I feel like a lot of people may just see you on the Instagram shit and just like see you for what your fashion, but being on this part, like on this platform, and actually getting to know who you are as mm-hmm. a person and not just as a symbol. Yeah, yeah, and I was I was always very you know introverted, like you know what I'm saying. Milton was kind of small, so everybody knew everybody. Like, I'm not going to mm-hmm. say I was in, like, a loner or nothing like that, but very introverted, very to myself. I always kept, you know, my family, my private life very to myself. And even with, you know, I feel like a lot of people, like, I'm trying to do the vlogs more. I'm trying to, you know, show people who I am just because yeah. I've always been very to myself. I, You know, people don't know me like that for real. You I know what I'm saying? you've been doing a very good balance. Like, the fact that I didn't, and up until the point that I did get to meet you, like, yeah. from the outside looking at I could see, okay, this nigga be hooping. This nigga's mm-hmm. nice. He be posting the videos <laughs> when you're in the gym just doing mm-hmm. you. I think you're doing a really good representation of trying to make that balance. Thank you, bro. I um, appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. So, and with a platform like yours, where you really could do anything, bro. Like seriously, it's just as long as it's true to you. Bird about to ask you for a feature. feature. Bird about to ask you for a feature. Don't do that, bro. Don't have it. You see how they be doing these. What? When you send over the when you send over the clip, you gonna be like, all right, so yeah, definitely make this a shared post. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we were, we was there at the um a, at the at the what concert was that? That Thrill concert. Which, which one? one? This one, one man. Know, um, you know how you get down, bro. Which one? Bro. Was it? Was a a which one? Time, I think the first time I actually met you was at the VB show. You was with Dodson. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah, first yeah. time he showed the pants. I was like, yo, I was looking at this nigga Dodson. Like, yo, what are these, bro? He like, this shit's <laughs> yeah, coming soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the dragons. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So facts. First time I seen them. Facts. I'm about to say, but, don't yeah. top ten. Where was this? Where was the event? What type of event was this? Damn, where was it, bro? What was it? You remember the name? Ron performed. Oh, oh shit! Oh, yeah, yeah. don't try this yeah. at home, right? Don't try yeah, this at home. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That y'all... was such a small. You were there. That's true. I remember because yeah, I was yeah. at the door. No bullshit. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. What the fuck was that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah now I remember that. Yeah, I was in New York. Oh yeah, you weren't there. I wasn't there. Yeah, see that? But yo, yo, you don't need it. Like that. See that? That's crazy. That's crazy. Nah, man. Even things like that. Like what? Yo. What y'all got going on is super dope, bro. Like, you know, appreciate that for yo, your, your lyrics, everything was really hey. And I was like, damn, like, I, you know, who's this nigga? I remember talking to him about that. I was like, yo, who's this nigga? And then, that's a terrible and then that's representation. When it, that's my, when it clipped, but my oh, yeah, when yeah, your voice went on, yeah, 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 nah, <laughs> nah, that's, that's typical Rob show. What you mean? Was your was your my voice gone because of the smoke? I mean, that's gonna happen. Uh, I mean, no, no, it's because I I was in everybody else's performance before that. I should have just stayed. The lineup was crazy, bro. Y'all was going stupid. That was a good show. That was that's yeah. Damn. But like, I don't That's think I, I think it's worse to you, obviously, because you. I feel like I'm, you're, like, you're, you're I'm the analyzing. He's, he's, you know he's, he's, yeah. he's telling the truth though. This nigga does way better than that. No bullshit. Mm-hmm. Or damn, you should do better than that. Then. Well, I'm saying, better than that shit was still dope. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Nah. So like, I'm, honestly, yeah, I'm really excited <laughs> for like future events and everything. Mm-hmm. You know how you pop out and everything, because like, community's growing, yeah, bro. That's what. Yeah. And I remember Ron said something up on stage where you know people, and I feel like it's you know people like. My biggest thing, the reason why he I was in high school, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, he called yeah. him Ron. I'm like, Ron. <laughs> Ron, Ron yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh, no, but like, yeah. you know him. Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, like yeah. Um, Ron. Really Ron so, um, and that was a great example of like the love that, that gets shown. Like, that was his first exactly. performance. First performance, performance when I was yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, what was I going to say? Uh, Ron T. What was he talking about? T. 
what he was saying. He said something. I don't know. Community. I can't quote it. Community. Community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you just like, uh, the reason why I really want to stay within Boston, like, I don't really have that aspiration to like move to New York or LA, even though they're more fashion based and stuff like that. Real it's because I want to build the community here to where Boston is up there with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the LA is yeah. in the New York. Because, bro, there's so many creators out here, bro. It could easily be one of those places that easy. people want, like, so easy, bro. But it's, so it's because of that mentality, like, because like oh shit's popping yeah, over there I like gotta I go gotta go over there yeah. but it's like nigga we you know just keep the resources yeah, exactly. here we can make it the next mecca yeah and it really could be I saw it's always I see it. I see oh, I see I slowly see it right right in front of our faces should be boom so that's yeah. yeah. why everybody want to be here now yeah so yeah bro building that community is very important all the prices and rent going up and shit for for these other niggas bro it's bad it is bad but now it's crazy. But now, yeah, what's, what's what's next for you before we, before we get out of here? Really curious to know, like, what's just next? I know you spoke on the the collection, but even mm-hmm. you know, in life or yeah, you like know. travel plans, whatever. You was in what Paris a couple months ago? Yeah, my my sister That's studying fine. abroad out there. Um, she goes to Emerson, and actually, that black I meant to say that earlier, that black woman. Um, that was really all her. That, that's she's a she's a poet. And so um, on the back, I put her poetry. It was like a collab between. Oh, that was her. Us. Oh, yeah, her piece so that was yeah, so that was her poetry on the back. That's dope. Yeah, I designed a front. Um. Yeah, shout out to my sister. Um, it's only right that the black woman piece was created yeah, by a black yeah, woman, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah. Uh, so she's studying out abroad. And then I met. we went to London. She studied in London, but then we took a train over to Paris. It was there for a day. I was tight. I just missed Joey Badass by like an hour, bro. But yeah, we was both at the at the, at the oh, Louvre. Oh, same spot? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, bro, it was just a dope experience, man. Being out there and seeing, like you always hear like Paris fashion and Euro- European fashion, but seeing it like, Bro, everybody is fitted. Like everybody. Like if you're not fitted, like you kind of whack. Or like you, like you oh, stand yeah. out to you know out here. You you know mm. if I was to go down Newberry in a nice fit, niggas is looking. Like I remember when I wore like I wore like a I recreated like one of the Tyler Creators outfits for this dude actually from Mass, the Canvas Dawn. He uh, made me like a briefcase based on Tyler Creator. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna throw a Tyler Creator inspired fit to go with it. I remember walking in the looks, bro. Just everybody looking like, and it's like it was even that crazy for real. But like you <laughs> know, what I'm saying people don't really be on the fashion tip, I guess, as much. But, like, being out there, like, I was just another one of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it was, it was crazy, bro. Um, definitely gave me a lot of inspiration, and, and you know, it just felt different. Yeah, it was dope, though. Yeah, because you did speak on, like, letting it come to you. So yeah. I'm sure, like, in order to be able to, you know, find those motivations and inspirations, mm-hmm. it does require, like, putting yourself out in different environments and yeah. seeing what other people are doing, mm-hmm. you know, because it's not enough to just... And another thing is, we uh, sweets his uh, his cousin Jamal. Um, where we did like this program called the Net, where it was just like getting you know a few black students and stuff like that together and things. And we did like a Facetime call with like students from Paris. And to me, when I heard Paris, all I knew was like yo, rich people, you know, rich white people drinking coffee and you know eating Going croissants and shit. And I niggas, get it, you know. So, <laughs> but then, niggas niggas and then like hearing, yeah, Colonials. yeah. <laughs> but then hearing about like. Yo, they, the black people is really going through the same shit as we are. You know what I'm saying? There's, yeah. a, there's a lot of ghettos, there's a lot of hoods, and and there's a lot of people that, you know, it's the same thing, you know. You, you know, you have, of course, you have those white people that are living, you know, not just white people, but just, you know, people, mm-hmm. European people living very well. And then you have, you know, niggas everywhere, bro, they're just struggling. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, seeing that, you know, live and firsthand, it was like, damn, you know, this change know, really man. need to happen. Atlanta, you know? Atlanta season three showed us that. Did you, mm-hmm. did you eat any snails out there? Hell no, no. I'm all set. No, I, I was <laughs> only here for like a day. I mean, who knows? I would have tried some. That's cargo. That's I'm trying to try, try that, that shit. shit. That's cargo. <laughs> nah, I just had some croissants, bro. Them shit's just Paris smells bad, though, right? You was telling me about that. Paris smells bad? No. No, I didn't smell anything bad in Paris. In London, though. Okay, okay. There was this one homeless guy. Yo, there was this one homeless guy, like the whole block. Type shit. Was, Damn. Yeah, it was bad, bro. That, that was what. That's probably one of the. That's probably the worst smell I've ever bro. smelled in my life. I can't lie. Uh, yeah, it smelled like shot, combination bro. like feces, like bo, like all that. So I was like, but I felt bad. Like I was like, bro, like who knows how long this dude been sitting here and that shit. You know what I'm saying? People walking by and you know, not even acknowledging. Not probably, nothing. Right? You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, like that's what you know. That's that goes back to the change that needs to happen. Like there's, but there's such a big divide in this world that you know needs some healing. So. That's a fact, you know. I appreciate that message, you know. Like, in order for that, we got to come together for shit to change, yeah. right? you know. And you know, I think we spoke on that probably like two episodes ago. And they had, you know, his moment to tell people, like, you know, the, our voices are stronger together, and it's strength in numbers in order to actually create the change that we want to see. 
But you know, I appreciate you you actually coming by and like actually yeah. being able to you know kind of break all that break all that down with the what the brand means and everything and and even I'm more invested in the brand now just hearing from with uh everything you you spoke on. Thank you, bro. So I, I appreciate you coming by. I appreciate for real. you having me. For real. I love what y'all got going on. You know, Bulls, bro. super dope. It's funny. It's called bad for the community. It's the opposite. Be mad good for the community, bro. It's catchy, though. So yeah, yeah, that's bro. why we stick with it. But bro. hey, man, if you enjoyed that episode, make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you show some love. Not only to us, but to Crave as well. You feel me? I, I like some pieces on there. I've I seen a lot of shit sold out. Is there anything, you know, you got anything... For, you know, maybe hidden in the trunk or something. Yeah. Um, well, I'll trunk. tell you, I'll, my, my next collection. Or just collection. be ready for the next drop. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like some of the pieces. I want some of the pieces now. Next yeah. collection, Um, the earliest would be September. But I think I'm going to do October for real. Just because I'm that video that I'm doing, like video pieces are coming with that. So that might take some time. But yeah, bro. Um, it's called the Superfly Collection. Uh, it's a. I was listening to Curtis Mayfield's Superfly. And um, mm. I was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is... That, that aesthetic, like that 70s disco, you Real know what I'm saying? Shit. I feel like That's a lot funny. of trends from back then are coming back. So it was kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, let me put my own flair to it. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of, that's all I'll say about that. But yeah, man, it's, I think it's my best collection yet. And it'll be my most available. Like, more, more pieces, making now and stuff process, like that. Yeah. yeah, everything's getting better. What's so with that varsity jacket with the butterflies and shit? That's coming, that's coming right after. There's going to be a uh, coat. That coat, I don't know if you've seen that puffer set, but I got a puffer set with that coming out, and then the varsity jacket. Yeah, two varsities after that. So. Say that. Hey yeah, man, y'all heard it here first, man. Stay tuned for the collections. Yeah. Hey, we out. Ancient. Oh.